Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. I would like to briefly introduce Dr. Mazlika Guharta Kurta and ask her a few questions. Dr. Guharta Kurta was born in Kolkata, studied in Mumbai and Delhi. She came to the United States after completing a master's degree in astrophysics from the University of Delhi to do a PhD in physics from the University of Denver. At NASA, Dr. Lika has worked in several positions as a scientist, as a mission designer, instrument builder, director and manager of science programs, as a teacher, and as a spokesperson. At times, she performs all of these roles in a single day. Before joining NASA headquarters in December of 1998, her career focused on studying the importance of the scientific exploration of space, and in particular, understanding the sun as a star and its influence on the planet Earth. She has been a co-investigator of the five Spartan 201 missions aboard space shuttles to study the solar corona and the white light and UVA, UVA, UV radiation, as well as 10 eclipse expeditions. She has also led the Living with the Star program for the past 15 years, and I'll ask her about this in a later bit. Last year, Lika, Dr. Lika was in the news during the historic eclipse. She was NASA's lead scientist to study the eclipse. Currently, she is a, on a one-year detail at NASA Ames Research Center as a lead program scientist for new initiatives and the Exploration Technology Directorate. Dr. Lika, congratulations on your award. I'd like to invite you on stage and ask you a few questions. First of all, let me thank you very much. I think this is a special honor to be introduced. Actually, this is what I would like to see. The youngest generation, men and women, and it, it's delightful to see a woman in science. So we've been talking about uh, discrimination or discriminatory behavior, right? So from my perspective, I would say this is kind of a wonderful gathering of uh, business entrepreneurs. So in that sense, I'm already kind of on the outside, but having you come here, ask questions, makes it very special. Thank you very much. Thank you. So Dr. Lika, tell us about your early life. At what age did you decide that you wanted to become an astrophysicist? Well, that's a tough one. When I was really young, I didn't know astrophysics was a word, but I certainly did know that I was fascinated uh, with the stars in the sky and wanted to know more about them, how it worked. So it was very early, when I was five, six years old. Uh -huh. So what is the Living with the Star program? I know that you've helped create and lead the International Living with the Star. Uh, Living with the Star program is a fascinating name for a NASA program in that it actually describes the functionality of the program. Uh, we live with our star, that is the sun. I know there are a lot of people who still don't think that the sun is a star simply because we see it during the day. And this star actually, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. This star dominates essentially every cubic inch of our environment, not just our planet, every planet out into the Milky Way galaxy. Now, the sun not only creates variability in our climate, something that is of great importance today, not going to talk about that, that's not my area of specialty. But, and, and so we know terrestrial weather, we know, you know, when there is a snowstorm, when there is a hurricane or typhoon, that's terrestrial weather. What I study and the field that Living with the Star program created is another kind of weather. Weather created in outer space, and it's called space weather. And this weather is actually driven by the variability of the magnetic field on the sun. And this variability creates space weather, uh, which is 
or whether that you can't actually detect on radar because it is actually variability of particles and radiations that interact with technology of all sorts. In fact, if you have anything that has an on-off switch, that object can be actually vulnerable to a solar storm. And that's what is space weather. And space weather affects us outside of our environment, terrestrial atmosphere, but it can actually affect us also on the ground. It can actually cause uh, variability in power grid, actually drive current that can uh, trip transformers and create power outages. So the consequences of severe and mild space weather is huge, and it is huge for our technologically invested society. And that's where we are, you know, from GPS, communication, navigation, satellite, to astronauts in space, everything is vulnerable to the variability of the sun. So that's kind of the essence of what the Universe Star Program is trying to do. So what advice would you give to all the young women who want to pursue a career in your field or in the larger science field? I would say uh, sort of lead with passion. I think we heard a lot of wonderful sort of uh, feedback from the community of entrepreneurs, you know, whether you're a scientist, whether you are in business or policy, listen to yourself, listen to your gut, I would say. What is your passion? And don't let anybody stop you. Don't let anybody kind of tell you, you can't do this. Because you are man, woman, short, tall, whatever adjective they might come up with. Just follow your passion, follow it doggedly. Um, give it all you have. That's what I would say. Thank you.